Hello and welcome to this industry forum overview of the aerospace sector requirements for statistical process control. Variation management is the application of statistical methods to the monitoring and control of a process to ensure that it operates at its full potential to produce conforming product. A statistically stable process behaves predictably to produce as much conforming product as possible with the least possible waste. While variation management has been applied most frequently to manufacturing, it applies equally well to any process with a measurable output. Key tools are control charts and a focus on continuous improvement. AS9103 requirement. This standard was created to provide a uni uniform process for the identification, control, documentation, and approval of key characteristics, KCs, when contractually invoked at any level or as a guidance within the area of aviation, space, and defense industry in the control of critical items. So let's have a look at this critical item, an example. The leading edge of a fan blade is solid. This is to reduce the chance of the fan blade shearing off and causing an engine shutdown if a, hit, if a bird hits during takeoff or landing. Key characteristic, for example, the blade form angle, the change of the angle going up the blade has a direct impact on full fuel consumption. Critical items tend to be related to parts and functions. Key characteristics tend to relate to features and performance. So we can see that there is a requirement within AS9103 to start identifying key and uh, critical items. AS9145 further builds on this. Initial process capability standards using industry recognized statistical methods shall be completed for product and process key characteristics identified within the design record and supporting control plans. Capability studies should take into consideration the effects of people, machines, tools, methods, materials, measurements, and environmental conditions. The quantity of samples required to establish process capability shall be statistically valid. This is determined in conjunction with the customer prior to the start of the study. Where it is impossible or prohibitively expensive to satisfy the stability and capability requirements of this section, the exception should be docu by, documented by the producer and customer approval obtained as required. Process capability indexes, for example, CPK, shall only be calculated after the process is determined to be stable using statistically valid methods for determining process capability and stability. We'll come back to CPK later. We have two types of data that we need to consider. We have variable data, which is quantitative data where measurements are used for analysis, data which can be physically measured using measurement equipment. We have attribute data, which is qualitative data that can be counted for recording and analysis in two or more groups. Data which is usually gathered in the form of non-conforming units or non-conformities. When we consider a normal distribution, so this is variable data, most processes return a normal distribution curve and we can see on the slide that we have the process spread, which is the extent of the upper and lower edge of the uh, distribution curve. 
and we then have the tolerance band, which is the distance between the lower specification limit and the upper specification limit. Ideally, we would like this process spread to fall within the control limits and to be shorter. In this instance, we can see a nice distribution curve sitting centrally within the upper spec and lower spec. And for a perfectly symmetrical process, the process mode, median, and mean will be the same value. When we consider variable data, we can have variation in three categories. The first category is location. So here we can see a nice distribution curve, but the vertical line is identifying the target value, and we can see that the curve is not centered on the target. We can have spread. Now we can see a normal distribution curve, but the width of the spread seems to be excessive. And then finally, we can have shape. So in this instance, we might say that we have a skewed distribution because it's no longer a nice shape curve. Or in real life, we can have any combination of these. When we consider variation, we have two types of variation in the process. The first type of variation is called common cause variation. Common causes refer to the many sources of variation that can, are consistently acting on the process. Common cause variations within a process produce a stable and repeatable distribution over time. This is called in a state of statistical control. If only common causes of variation are present and do not change, the output of the process is predictable. They are events which can be expected to occur due to faults inherent in a process and appear as random variation. They will affect all of the individual values of the process. To improve performance when we have common cause variation, we need to take management action. And the reason we call this management action is that we have to take decisions about the process maybe changing the plant, the equipment, or the process itself. And these decisions are taken by management. The second type of variation we have to consider is special cause variation. Special causes are often called assignable causes. And the reason that we use this term is quite, obvious, uh, quite often it is ob obvious to the people closest to the process the reasons for the problem. So common causes refer to any factors causing variation that affect only some of the process output. If special causes of variation are present, the process output will not be stable over time. These are events which are intermittent, unpredictable or unstable, and affect individual values of the process. To improve performance, we take what is known as local action. For instance, action taken by people closest to the process, such as the operator. When considering variation, then it's useful to record the process performance in the form of a control chart. And here we can see an example of an X bar R chart. In this instance, five parts were taken every hour, the five parts were measured, and the top chart shows the average measurement of the five parts taken each hour. The bottom chart is a chart showing the difference between the largest value in the sample of five parts and the smallest value in the sample of five parts. So the data is plotted in real time, the data points spread over time, it's a pair of charts to show location and spread. We can see the data distribution and also control limits to identify non-normal data. To understand what variation is present, we need to monitor the process over time. 
control limits provide values outside of which we can judge that special cause variation is present. Control limits are calculated for both the process mean and the range of a process using statistical constants relating to the size of each sample. And in this example, we can say, see a control chart and the broad red lines are showing the upper and lower control limits for the X bar chart, the top chart, and on the bottom chart, the red line is showing the control limit for the range. Any values outside of these control limits would be an indication that there is a problem with the process and its performance. Because we're dealing with statistics and because we're dealing with numbers, then we can analyze the data in a number of ways and we can use different types of charts. We can use what is known as an X bar and sigma chart or an X bar S. It's similar to the X bar R chart. However, for this chart, a large subgroup is used and the bottom chart plots the standard deviation of the subgroup, not the range. We can have an individual moving range chart or an IMR. This chart plots the individual values and the range between the current value and the previous value. We can have a median chart. Both the median and range are plotting on the same chart. Control is based on the median point. And then we could have a short production chart, sometimes called a Z chart. This copes with small batches or successive setups. It's useful for high variety work, can contain data for more than one customer, and is also good for targeting and can be used for graded parts or part machining. When we consider capability, then we can have one value which tells us the relationship of the process spread and the location to the specification. And so CP index shows the spread relative to the tolerance, but not whether the process is centered. Hence, it's rarely used as a single measure. And so what we can see on this slide then is that we have a normal distribution curve. We have the upper and lower spec limits, and we can see that the distribution curve is actually equal to the upper and lower specification limits. In this instance, the CP would be one, the spread equals the tolerance. Because CP does not tell us the location of the process spread, then we tend to use CPK. This was something I mentioned earlier. So the process capability index CPK gives us an indication as to how well the process is centered. The CP index, CPK index is calculated as the minimum value of the upper specification minus X bar bar divided by three sigma or X bar bar minus the lower specification divided by three sigma. For a perfectly centered process, the two measures will be the same. A CPK of one indicates that half the spread, three standard deviations, will fit between the mean and the nearest tolerance. It's used to show the relationship between the spread and the tolerance, but also used to show the location of the curve relative to the specification limits. When we consider attribute data, this is data that is collected as counts or whole, whole numbers. These may be defects or defectives. Each defective may have more than one defect. The data may be grouped, for example, go or no go, which produces three results, oversize, conforming and undersize. Sample sizes may be constant or varying, and proportions are often used with varying sample size. Typically, for attribute charts, we use four types of charts, and these can be grouped into covering uh, defects, which are a single defect in the nature. If we have a fixed sample size, so for example, we're sampling a batch of 50 components every time, 
then for a single defect fixed sample size, we would use an NP char. If we had a single defect and variable sample sizes, for example, each shift did not produce the same number of parts, then we could use a P char. We could also use a chart which was plotting more than one defect. So if we had more than one defect and a fixed sample size, we would use a C chart. And if we had multiple defects and variable sample sizes, we would use a U chart. So in summary, common cause variation, it's the variation that is present in the process all of the time and appears as background noise. We have special cause variation. This is variation in the process which is not normal, is often random and intermittent, and it indicates some form of operator information intervention is required. Critical item, those items having significant effect on product creation and use of the product, including safety, performance, form, fit, function, producibility and service life. Key characteristics, an attribute or feature whose variation has a significant influence on product fit, performance, service life or producibility. It requires specific action for the purpose of controlling variation. We have process capability, capability and index such as CPK which indicates how well a process is perform, performing when compared to the control uh, features or tolerance. And we have two aerospace standards, AS9103 and AS9145, which mandate the use of statistical techniques and process variation management. For further information on statistical process control, please contact Industry Forum. Thank you.